Hey, hey, it's Kelly here at Don't Run With Scissors, your favorite, well, hopefully your favorite, Jeep driving lawyer, mom of twins, three crazy rescue dogs who likes to craft in her spare time, is training for Ironman, and has gone back to school to be an ASL interpreter. If you're new here, welcome to the crazy. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the like button. What it does is it sends me a little message, boost my self-esteem. Um, if you're returning, welcome back. It is the 20th late at night but i just know that my week ahead of it is crazy busy um I, I feel like all of my professors know that next week is break and so they're like adding all sorts of homework but it's all good because I, right now i'm on top of things um we're coming up on the end of asl3 which means that then we'll start ASL 4. Um, the teacher is running a little behind schedule, but that's okay because he's also our ASL 4 teacher. So we'll just sort of flow it all together, I guess. I don't know. We're just kind of rolling with it. That's The control freak in me is on hyperdrive right now um, as far as classes are concerned. Right now, um, I have a... B, B plus in ASL, but he hasn't graded tons of stuff, so I don't know. He keeps saying, don't worry, but I worry. I have an A in anatomy physiology, and I believe I have an A minus in web design. I did decide my final project. I turned in the, the rough draft or the the tree for web design i'm and i was pretty sure going into class at this if i could i was going to do it anyways um i'm going to redo my law firm's website um and and we'll see <laughs> you know the bo the bonuses i get the project done hopefully i'll get an a in the class i don't know why the cam the lighting in here is so crazy today um, tonight, I don't know. Um, but if I don't like it well enough, I don't have to publish it and put it on my website. Like I don't have to change my website for it. It's win win. Um, I think Bean has decided she's going to do them on our dog or like on our animals, and maybe have some tips on like on guinea pig tips or on rescuing animals and things like that. So we'll see. Um, my coach and I had a heart, so I, okay, so updates on things. So, okay, ASL is done. Oh, we have to do sign of the week. Um, sign of the week is flower. And you, you, it's like, I don't know, you take your, like this, and you go, flower, flower. Um, so you can watch the flowers grow. There you go. So watch. And I don't know why watch is with a V. Watch, watch. Flowers grow. So, you like to watch flowers grow? Um, so there you go. It's spring. We like things growing. Um, we have to still, we're practicing a story named One Fine Day. It's a crazy story. It's about a farmer who sees fox drinking the farmer's cow's milk. And the farmer gets mad and he tells the, so he catches the fox and he chops his tail off, tail off, but so then the, the fox has to talk to the cow and say, cow, will you give me your milk and the cow is eating grass and he says 
No, but if you bring me hay, that's not the sign for hay, but he wants hay. If you bring me the hay, I'll give you the milk. And it just goes on and on. And it's like, so in order to get the hay, he has to go talk to the hay. To no hay talk. So he talks to the hay. And the hay says, well, if you bring me water, I'll, I'll give you hay. I'll let you hay, take some hay. And then you can take the hay to the cow and the cow will give you the milk. And you can take the milk to the farmer and the farmer will give you back your tail. So then he has to go talk to the river to get the water. And the river's like, well, you have to bring a bucket. So then he finds some girl up in a tree. And he talks to the girl up in the tree to give him the bucket. What, anyways, so that's our big project. And I think we have one more test. I don't know. And then we'll start ASL 4. So the big question is, this summer, what classes am I taking? I don't have to take the recommended electives even. However, those classes would be beneficial in the sense that it would help me pass the overall certification for the state. So then it's the question in ASL 5 and 6, which is not, it's an optional recommended elective, is only offered during the summer. So the question becomes, do I take the two other summer only recommended classes, which is five credits, or do I take all four classes, which would put me at 11 credits for the summer, which is dumb because that's not full time. So then like, do I just take an extra like small class in there? This is summer. It's not supposed to be. Idea. So I don't know. I am still debating. Because then I could always take five and six next summer. But I have to look at the plan. I might not need classes next summer. Like in a year. I might be done. Because I don't need all of these extra classes. So I don't know. We did. I talked to my coach um, after I met with my so I met with the GP because the GP was, I called them, I was in so much pain last week at, at one point, I couldn't even stand up straight. And then I had another point where the pain was so so intense, I literally threw up on like a couple times from it. So I went to the GP and the GP's like, well, let's pass you off to pain management and see what he says. Pain management and I... Um, I actually have a lot of respect for my pain management doctor because one, his whole, he's with the orthopedic team that I see or, um, and they're all, they, their focus is on athletes. Um, so his approach is let's take the least invasive, um, approach to things. And my neurosurgeon is the same way. Like my neurosurgeon, even though he's a surgeon, his approach is always surgery is your last option, not your first option. And because they have athlete backgrounds, I, th I think that they're, they sort of have a different approach to some things. So him and I talked about it and the pain that I'm having in my back is actually not my back. And then I thought it was my hips and he's like, well, definitely your bursa in my hip is inflamed. We know that. And we know we've been battling that off and on for, for quite some time, but you know, we've been doing a lot of stretching and, and that's not generally too bad that like that pain's manageable. I said, but it does, I said, it feels like it's my hips, but it's, I know it's not my hips. And he's like, and I happened to be pulling out my anatomy and physiology book. Cause I had, I was studying and, uh, I said, he goes, well, show me what the pain, where the pain is. And I show him exactly what it is because he's, yeah, that's not your hips. I go, I know it's not. I said, but that's the best descriptor. It's my SI joints, which is kind of like the back of your pelvis area, kind of your hips, but not really. Um, so we're going to do some, a lot of strength and strengthening of my core because that's kind of like that whole 
your core, your pelvic girdle, all of that is all there. Um, so he really wants me to focus on that because we're, we're technically in off season. Um, he, he recommended putting off Ironman. Um, he's like, look, I know I can't stop you. He goes, and I don't want to stop you. He's like, but we have to look at this from a practical standpoint of how do I, am I just going to throw band-aids on it and hope? that things stay steady and I can finish the race and, and still be safe and not do any long-term damage um, because, you know, that's a fine line. Or do I wait a little longer, really hone in and try and fix the underlying issue so that I can do it and do it in a really healthy, safe manner? And he said, the final decision is up to me. Um, in the meantime, we are going to go in and do a procedure where he's going to inject cortisone or steroids into my SI joints. And then two weeks later, we're going to do my hips. Um, and hopefully that will calm things down enough where I can focus in and really do the work that I need to do and be pain free, you know, walking up a step kind of thing or getting out of my chair, or up out of bed or whatever. And so I went to my coach and I, I went to a friend of mine and, you know, it, it hit, we all know February is a rough month for me. And so the emotions just kind of bubbled over and I'm in tears. And of course, the, the Facebook feed memory comes back up about, you know, when I had that conversation with my neurosurgeon and stuff. And I said, am I a failure if I put off Ironman another year? It's been five years since I set the goal. At what point do I just say, I failed? And... Um, that that's a really or how or do I just say like it's an impossible goal I'm not going to be able to do it and my coach said realistically I absolutely can do it I have my doctor support if we do it in a in a much more conservative in, in sort of a, a conservative way right now and, and really evaluate it and um two of my dear my my dear friend Jason who I did 99 for and my friend John um, both said, look, goals don't have expiration dates. So if I want it, I, I can do Ironman when I'm 70. I can do Ironman when I'm 80. We know that individually I can do the distances. Um, I've, I've done them time and time again. That's not a problem that, you know, the issue is, is can my body, you know, handle weather? Because usually they're, you know, for me, they're during the summer. Um, so I, I battle the heat and I have a really hard time with heat. Um, I don't sweat. One of the problems with my neural conditions is that I don't sweat. Um, so when I get hot, that, that's really dangerous in a race situation. And I have to take that into consideration. And I have to take that into consideration when I'm racing and where I'm racing. And then it's the whole, how do I transport a tandem? So... Like, it's not like I can just put it in a bike case like most people with their bikes where they pop off the wheels and it's it's a fairly small case. My bike is six feet long. Actually, I think it's seven feet long. It, it's long, long. Like, so I generally race local or at least on the other side of the state so that we can easily transport my bike. And flying generally, like I've flown a couple times with a shunt and it's not generally a problem. But there's always that risk um, of, you know, going up and the pressurizing in the cabin and the difference in the, in the pressures and the weather's patterns and things like that, that I have to battle. And when you're doing a race like Ironman, you, you really have to have, you know, it's one of those where all the stars have to align. And so I have to make sure that my stars I have a few more stars to align than the average athlete. Um, and I have to make sure that I, I'm giving myself the best situation. And 
So we have elected to postpone Iron Man till July of 2023. Um, what that may do also is sort of take some pressure off my plate. So one of the things my therapist last week and I, we talked about um, with everything going on is I need to take some things off my plate. Uh, I need to lighten my load and I'm not really good with that. Um, I'm, I'm, that's just not, that's something I struggle with. Um, and she also reminded me, um, you know, goals are goals. There, it, it's okay. It doesn't have to happen tomorrow. Some goals don't happen overnight. Some take longer and it, that's not a bad thing. You know, when I set that goal five years ago, we didn't anticipate several more brain surgeries. We didn't anticipate, you know, ovarian, you know, and uterine cancer, we didn't anticipate a lot of things that have happened. And so we, we just kind of rolled with things and, um, and it's okay. So she asked me, she's like, in the next three weeks, my job is to lighten my load somehow. And, um, taking Ironman and, and postponing it a little bit, um, you know, the extra year, um, as long as my motivation and my training stays consistent, like it has been lately, um, we're good to go that's going to be kind of a struggle. So, Hey, you know, if you don't see me posting on Instagram selfies of, you know, biking or swimming or running or whatever, shout for a couple of days, shout out and ask where, where the heck they are. <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, so what my coach and I have decided to do, there's a local race here. That's been a bucket list race, um, for quite some time. It's called swim to the moon. They do a 5k swim. So a 3.1 mile swim. Um, they also do a 10 K we are not doing the 10 K. So the plan is to do swim to the moon in August. We'll hit 50 K officially at Bear Lake this year in the beginning of October. And, um, we'll run some more races and um, we'll do some running races between now and then. Um, and we'll be ready to do Ironman in 2023. Um, and I'm okay with that. So, you know, um, so yeah, so I have been working my butt off at the office. I have been super busy getting things, um, you know, more on track. I know that, the, so this, this next week we have, I have a couple tests. Um, we'll probably get another piece of the pro the big project tomorrow night. And, um, and then we have the big video project and a final for ASL bio. We have two or three modules left. I'm going to next week from, and I have court Tuesday, Thursday. I think that's it. Wednesday, I get my hearing aids. Um, I thought I had another court date in there this week. I think I've been court three times this week. Um, no, I'm in court on Tuesday, Thursday, but on Wednesday, first thing in the morning, I have to have a CT of my head. Um, and then I have to, I'm going to go get my new hearing aids. And then on Friday, I get my colonoscopy to try and figure out some more of that. Um, and then the following week, I'm actually on midwinter break. Generally in winter breaks, I try to do something like finish up a house project and um, catch up anything from the office that maybe has slipped through the cracks. Um, I don't know that I have anything right now. I think I've rectified anything that was slipping through the cracks, but I got a new case in late last week and I met with a client today and we have a bunch of work that needs to get filed. So, um, there, there, and then I've got to prep for the following week. I have more hearings. So it is, it is busy, 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 busy. And I'm not faulting any of that. Um, I'm like, it's all good. But yeah, even if my project around the house next week is honestly measuring all the rooms so that I can finally order the flooring. I'm fine with that. Um, it's been really rainy and snowing here this last week. So I have not, um, paintings kind of 
put on hold because you can't like you shouldn't really well and it's too cold to open windows for ventilation and i don't want to be painting in here without ventilation um so yeah uh clay and i are, are working on more patterns um some really cool things coming down um so yeah no new whip go numbers yet um i i'm i'm guessing jesse's gonna call them earlier than the 27th just because it's february but usually she waits you know usually it's the 27th of the month um i am excited for the new whip go goals to be pulled um i know what i want them to be and there's nothing on my board like my board my rules and i get that um and mine are yearly goals so it's 10 days on each of the projects that's on my board but because i set them up for just like just 10 days um it in my brain mentally it is the 10 days in the month that's called um but everybody's working on you know the ep i feel like everybody is working on the epic disney princess cell from clouds factory again um i started it i love that piece clouds factory just released encanto which is ironic because that's not a disney print she's not a princess yet she's not classified as a disney princess but of course i had to buy it because we don't talk about Pro. um if you are on TikTok, I don't think they're on Instagram. There is a high school. There was just the World Language Festival. Yes, welcome to my ADD. There was the World Language Festival competition, and um, they recognized sign language. And there's a local high school that signed and acted out Encanto, or at least part of Encanto. They did phenomenal, and they placed. They got a medal. They totally deserved it. I cannot wait to see what they do next. Totally exciting. Um, so I I did buy Encanto. And then I picked up a couple of the other movies. Because I'm not just doing the prince princesses. Um, I'm doing all of the Disney movies that I can. Like all of the animated. And so like I'm trying to decide like is Mary Poppins. Like, it's animated, but it's not really animated, and so is Pete's Dragon. Those are two of, like, my favorites, so I want to include them, but they're really not animated in the traditional sense of, like, Snow White and Cinderella and Encanto or um, Brave and things like that. So, um, but on Etsy, Ivory Needle, first of all, she does some great other patterns, too, but she has a lot of the other Disney movies so i've been trying to add those in um and i just reached out to her asked and asked her about a couple others um that are missing that would be nice to have in there um so i'm hoping that's on my whip go board i'm hoping that gets called and i'm hoping um the marine corps emblem gets called but we'll see We'll see. Um, okay. So that said, I have two pieces that I worked on. And that talks about my haul. I, that's the only haul I have bought. Um, which was still, you know. For somebody who's not supposed to be buying on anything that isn't necessary this month. I really have uh, But I have been drinking my water. And I have been very consistent on my workouts. Um... I am debating, I have not tried on my swimsuit yet, but swimsuits are starting to be out in the store, so I should be okay. I should be okay. If worse comes worse, we'll just have to buy a new swimsuit. I don't want to have to buy a new swimsuit unless mine's too big. Um, okay. Enough of my rambling. We're now 25 minutes in and I haven't showed you a single thing I've stitched. Okay. So, forgive me. Okay. So my whip go goals this month, and they're part of my no new starts too, um, were Lindy S Stitch's Funky Menagerie, which we finished. I showed you guys that one. And the other one is the Modern Folk Embroidery Fruit of Plenty Sal. Or as I think there's a hashtag that somebody are, um, on Instagram is doing the 
still fresh fruit or something. It's, it that cracks me up. Um, so I have now got in um, five and a half days. For me to count it as a day, it has to be at least a hundred stitches. I can come in in my brain. Like if I stitch fifty stitches here and fifty stitches on this day, I can put them together and equal one day. But if like. But if I like, like say one day I stitch 500 stitches on one day, that still is only one day. Okay. So I, um, when you last saw it, I was partially done with the February block. Um, I had finished, I actually had finished a significant portion of it. I told you I had had a miscount, but I wasn't going to rip things out and fix it. I think it looks fine. If it doesn't look fine to you, I'm sorry, but it's mine and I'm not changing it. Um, that said, I, um, I got February's block all done. That's this one here. In retrospect, I'm kind of sad that I didn't like maybe put some red or change the crown to a, like silver. Well, silver probably to gold probably. Um, but I didn't add a pop of color into this one. That's okay. So now we we are moving on to March. Um, oh, I got my pin in there. Weird. Okay, that's okay because I didn't really go past. So March is almost to the edge. Um, I was running errands yesterday. I had to go down to um. Well, it's actually in Detroit at the east at the farmers market down there. Um, I love the big farmers market down in Detroit. They have Eastern Market. Um, they have one of the, it, it's just glorious. They were, there's a distillery, the Detroit City Distillery did a punchki infused vodka. It is limited edition and I got to go pick up mine the other day. So I stitched in the car a little bit um, as my friend drove because he wanted to go and take a tour. So um, this one has got, I think that it's supposed to be a cornflower, hence the coloring I did. And then it's tulips. And what I figured is I have red, green, and orange over here. So I picked up pink because I love pink tulips. Cornflowers are like a blue purple. I may do, so there's two daisies that come out, or daisies. Two tulips that come out this way and two more down here. I think I'm going to make the two that go this way yellow. And then the other two, the, the matching pink. Um, so my four corners and the center, the big center medallion that's in here, I will add in the pops of color, but otherwise it's going to be, I think it's six, four, six and three, 10. I have one of the big cones of doom. However, um, what I did, forgive my tangled up. I don't have any more little floss droppies. Makes me sad. Um, because at first I didn't like that, like I didn't use them, but now I use them all the time. And so I've been slowly, like, as I can. So I have the big cone of 646 and 310, as well as a few, a couple other cones. But um, I just cut off my hanks and I loop them in there, which is nice because I don't have to carry scissors with me, really, because I they're all cut to a, a nice length for me. Um... I had these on nice bobbins, but Nigel, the dog from hell, um, bless his heart, likes to eat them. Um, he has eaten a few of my floss drops, so then I have to let my, my floss um, dry and, and put it on a new floss drop. Um, this one's from Janet Jabber, so I love it. And every time I, I work on my project, I think of Janet. This one is from when I bought from Hands On Design. It's funny that I know these things. I don't know a lot of things, but those I know. I don't know. Um, so we have Mark. Likely, so I am now working on day six out of ten. By the end of ten days, I will have the March square done. Maybe start April but I will know where I can cut off the side. I may just leave it at this point and not worry about it until I'm, I'm debating if I still want to keep working three across, three across, three across for all 12, or if 
after I finish March, doing April and then down. So I know the length as well. And then I, then I could trim mine or I may just, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, I make no guarantees. I make no promises other than that I will continue to work on it so that I get my, my whip go squares. Um, because right now I'm three for three out of four. Oh, so you don't need the, the phone numbers. I, I don't want to show those. Okay. So, um, we're working on this one. So if the other one that would be cool if it got called is Monopoly. So Disney's my Disney square is 23. Monopoly is 14. And Marine Corps is six. So um Like I said, that I will at least get the March square done in the 10 days and I will likely get part of April um, done. I don't know that I'll get the whole square done. It, it just all depends. The other thing that I worked on um, is the self-love sampler by Birdie's Crossing that I started. This is my February sale and it is just a self-love sale on, on Instagram. Um, again, it shows up. I, I don't, I know I started, so I got further along on this, this row and then I started putting in the words. It does show up much better in person. It could be darker, but I'm not going to worry about it because out of all of the sayings on here, it's not my favorite. So, um, it's, it's not that I don't love the, the saying, um, it says, um, you are more than a number on on a scale. Um, so we right now we are working on these motif here and then this words here. Because I haven't decided if I'm going to do these in metallics like a toile or if I'm going to just do like a pretty silvery gray. Um, but what I've kind of figured is I have my, my palette. All of my words are going to be in that those pinky peaches and all of my like flower motifs are going to be in my blue blue greens what I may do is my crowns like I said in a silvery um, the diamond obviously I want to do that in something sparkly I'm not sure what these are are they supposed to be like dangling crystals? Because I think they might be. At which point, then yes, I want those kind of metallic-y too. Um, and I think I'm going to do the um, Damn, I'm Beautiful. I think I'm going to change beautiful to enough. Uh, because that's uh, that's what I always say is I'm enough. Um, and that I might do like in 310. But I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, so, okay, with that, that's all, I know, it's crazy, um, um, yeah, so, with that said, um, Oh, on Instagram, if you follow Ozark Mountain Stitcher and her story about her nephew, Josh, um, he was in a horrific accident, almost died. They have got him at home now and they need everybody. It's free, but let's just start off by this. It will cost you nothing but a few minutes of your time. If you go to her profile or if you go to mine, I have a picture of the wording, so you'd have to type it in yourself. There's a contest and the winner, um, based on voting, and it may be more than the top winner, um, gets an adaptive bicycle. Those are very expensive pieces of equipment. Um, and so I'm asking everybody to go vote for Josh so that they can get this equipment for him because it, it would be such a benefit. Um, to him and it would be such a blessing to his family um and again it costs you nothing but a few minutes of your time so 
Um, I will try to remember and pop that down below as well. Don't forget, check out Hillbilly Candles. I have more candles coming in the mail, and I'm super, super excited. Um, and, of course, ju Jukebox Citry. Again, we have some really cool things. Um, Clay and I are working on um, a sampler kind of homage to the Women's Baseball League. Like, think a league of their own, which I loved. Um, and um, a piece for Queen Elizabeth and a couple other historical figures. Um, Clay and I both have a, a, a pet, a love of music, but we also both really appreciate historical leaders. Um, and not just, you know, obviously recognizing the, I don't want to say mainstream is not the right word, but the ones that are more recognizable, but also drawing out some of the ones that maybe people aren't as aware of that are just as, you know, that are, are so important that we don't lose that history either. So we're working on some things there. Um, March is Stitch Asia that um that is a hashtag on instagram and i forget who started it and i so so apologize but we all know i suck at names um i will be participating i have a spot on my no new starts for a small because i finished my ornaments i i do want to do some saint patrick's day um little ornaments um but they're like those are fast stitches like those are fun little fast ones that's why they're smalls um but i also want to stitch it's by jonesy diary and it it's a little um i want to say it's a japanese little doll and when you and you stitch him and he's very traditional and so she turned it into a stitchy pattern that will then turn into like a little soft like little bally ball type and and i'm really doing a really piss poor job of explaining it and i meant to grab the the recipe i meant to grab the pattern and i will grab the pattern for the next episode to show you guys um but what happens is is when you you st you stitch him if you had him you put the first eye on when you make the wish and when the wish comes true you put the second eye on so then he has both eyes um, and he's super cute. So I, I, I'd like to stitch him and I don't think he, that he, and it, I don't know that it's a, he, he, mine is a, he obviously, cause I have decided that. Um, but I don't know that traditionally it has to be a boy. I don't know, but I want to stitch him. The one thing I do want to find out, and I found out about the pattern because, um, on Creativity by Gid, she showed it and I fell in love. I, I just thought it was the cutest thing. So, I, of course, I had to rush in and buy it. Um, because we all know I sell like that. Like, I'll buy the stuff, doesn't mean we're starting it together. Like, that that's all that means is that we're going to buy the stuff together. But beyond that, I, I, I can't make any promises. Um, what I'd like to find out like, the pattern is charted so that he's red, his little outfit is red. Do they come in other colors, like, or are they always red? Does anybody, like, and it may make sense once you see what I'm talking about later. But, yeah. So, that, like, that's my Stitch Asia thing that I want to get done. Um, and then I'll have my little, my little guy over here. Um, and other than that, I'll work on my whip go goals. And then if I have extra time, then I'll pull out like my self self love sampler and make more progress on that. Excuse me, I was thirsty. Um. So yeah, so check out all of those. I will um endeavor to put links in the box below. We all know I suck at that. Although I have been getting better, if you guys have noticed. I have been. Um, the other thing that I, um, go check out Denise from Black Ribbon Stitch Studio. Her last floss tube. Um, 
she highlighted a new sampler. Well, it's it's not a new sampler. It's a new to me sampler. Um, we all know I am not the biggest fan of samplers in general. Um, I find them beautiful when other people stitch them, but I, I'm not generally drawn to them. And Denise um, is going to stitch Rosina. Am I say Please tell me I'm saying that right. I suck at names. Um, and a lot of people are stitching that sampler, and it's gorgeous, and I want to stitch it. It's on my wish list. I'm, I don't stitch linen. And so I need somebody to say, it would be okay if you did it like on an 18 count Ada. So if somebody could let me know and clue me in, I'd really appreciate it. It'd make me very happy. Um, but she highlighted another, so Rosina is the, the, the reason that that one is so big, if you have not seen this, which I can't imagine that you haven't. It is one of the very few antique samplers that were stitched by African-American young ladies. Um, and so it got charted. It's a beautiful pattern. It is on my wish list. Um, the whole linen thing just terrifies me. Um, so... I am blanking on the one that Denise highlights. There's a second one now. It's not by Rosina. It's somebody else. Um, and this young lady, this chart is gorgeous. Gorgeous, I'm telling you. It's gorgeous. Um, and honestly, I, I'm so in love with this pattern. Like, I, I, I need to find this pattern and who sold it. Um, because I went to this website for the pattern maker but they only sell wholesale so i can't buy it from them so i have to figure out who else has it in one two three stitch i don't think has it fat quarter shop definitely doesn't have it um so i may have to bug Bobby at Pumpkin Creek Prims because I know she can order through Hoffman's and I know it's distributed by Hoffman's is one of the places. Um, I actually think it said that my local stitchy shop up in Fenton carries it. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. M maybe if I, um, so I made honor, I made the Dean's list last semester and I got my official letter. So maybe that will be my present to myself for making the Dean's list. Because, yay, Dean's List. Um, now my goal is to make sure that this, or to see if this semester I can get all three of us in the house on the Dean's List. Because that would be a bloody fucking miracle. Listen, I'd, I, I, I'd be excited if two of us in the house made the Dean's List this semester. Um, technology is, yeah. If anybody has any coping mechanisms for... I keep saying teenager, but my kids aren't teenagers. All three of us in the house have executive processing disorder, which makes, on top of ADHD, which makes life so much fun. Welcome to my world. It's all glittery. Um, the boy child is really struggling, um, especially with all the online learning. If he's sitting in class and the teacher, like there's a, sort of a, I don't want to say holding his hand, but like going, hey, William, wh wh where's your paper kind of thing? He does okay. It's not the easiest thing, but like he was taking intro to business. He couldn't access the ebook and nobody could figure out why. They couldn't get the tutor access to the ebook either. And then they finally got him access to the ebook, but it wasn't the kind that reads to you. That's a different code. Nobody could figure that out. So then, so he ended up dropping intro to business. His nutrition teacher pulled me into a video conference with him and was yelling at me that I need to be tutoring my son in nutrition. Okay. I have a JD, not an MD. I'm not a registered dietitian. While I'm probably fully capable of teaching that class. 
and tutoring that class, I've, it's not my job. And so the teacher is like snitting at me and mansplaining shit to me, which pissed me off to no end. But then is telling me it's my responsibility. So yeah, last week, Tuesday or Wednesday, I, I, I just completely broke down. I like, I was in tears. I was a sobbing mess. I had screamed at him about it because we got, like, we were bumping heads. He was frustrated. I was frustrated. It was just ugly. And I just, I don't know how to help him because the coping mechanisms that I use aren't ones that his brain, it doesn't work with him. And I'm just, So if anybody has any ideas or suggestions, if you could pop them down below, message me on Instagram. I, I am just, yes, I, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, so yeah, last week was just kind of, it was a stressful week. This week, like I said, it's going to be a little high pressure. Even next week I have, I have several hearings coming up on cases. I have several more that will be coming up because we have to file motions in the next couple of days um, in phone calls. So um, it does get a little crazy on top of, you know, midterms and things like that. And then, like I said, we have several tests and I'm going to get new hearing aids. So, and they're really pretty and they're cute and they're little and you can hardly ever see, even see them. So um, yeah, I've been baked stressing stress baking. Cause I do that. So, you know, we made pumpkin cheesecake. I made the chocolate cake. I am really trying not to make more because my last A1C, um, six months ago, my A1C was over a 12. It's like 12.7, um, which is scary high. I have been very diligent with trying to get back on track with exercising because ex exercising will ro lower your insulin. Um, I'm really watching kind of what I eat, except for the last couple of days have been a shit show, but whatever. Um, my A1C is almost back into the normal range for non-diabetics. Um, it is a 7.4, 6.9 is technically normal. We are so close. So I'm trying not to stress bake because if, if I stress bake, then I, I'm more likely to eat it. The other thing is, is when I stress bake, I don't always use gluten-free things. And that really makes a gut difference with my gut. Um, and we're finding out that dairy is really an issue for me too, which I kind of knew, but I didn't realize how bad it's, um, so yeah, so it's been, it's been tricky. So, okay. Anyways, this has rambled on way longer than I anticipated, especially given the amount of stitching that I did. So I'm really, really sorry, but yeah, I had to verbal vomit. Um, okay. So. Gearing up for a busy week, it, that's life. Um, however, I have always got an open inbox. So if there is something that I can do to help you out, let me know. Um, in the meantime, just know that I am cheering for everybody to be great and be successful in whatever you need to get done or do or whatever. Um, if you want to set a goal and need me to help cheer you on or whatever, let me know because I will do that. I will, I will cheer. I will do whatever. Um, the other thing that I forgot to do last week and I wanted to take a second, if you're still here with me, thank you. Thank you. Um, Bobby from pumpkin Creek primitives has a former classmate of hers that wrote a book called bending the arc by Keita Haynes. It is a, it is a good read. I listened to it. Finally, came out in audiobook. I snatched it up on Audible with my credit. Um, it, it is a good read. It, it more people need to read it. Um, so yeah, there is that. As far as the giveaway from last week, I forgot to draw. So you have another week. Um, so if you want to go back and comment, that's fine. Nobody's going to hold that against you. Um, but there was a question and you just had to answer the question and use the one word. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. It, it is totally your opinion. 
and your opinion is valid in my in my world so um yeah so let me know um with that i'm gonna let you guys go i'm gonna go to bed it is <laughs> this is way longer than i it should have been i'm sorry um so i'll see you guys later bye